Welcome to Was It Good, the podcast that reviews movies and TV shows. Today, we are taking a look at the first season of Welcome to Wrexham. I am Ravi, and as always, I'm joined by my two brothers, Arjuna and Krishna. And Krishna is sporting a beautiful Manchester United kit. Yes. Uh, this thing is actually so old. But I was say, it's, it's like 10 years old? Yeah, I th- more than that. I think it's like 15, maybe. It smells dusty. Smell, yeah, you can smell it from there yeah. for sure through yeah. the camera. Nope, yep. smell yeah. of vision, smell of vision. That's let's come back. That's oh. the you know, when uh, the first Avatar movie in 2009, the James Cameron Avatar movie came out, you know, 3D like really got revitalized by that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the big thing that they're gonna do with Avatar 2, it's gonna do <laughs> smell vision, and that's gonna oh. be the big thing for Avatar 2. I feel like that should be a, like a college humor skit or something. <laughs> and like, if if you could get James Cameron to like re- like sit down, and like make it like that would sell it. That'd be hilarious. That would be really good. Yeah. Yeah. Why? I don't know why you would ever want smell of vision. It was <laughs> popular with it was like wasn't uh, Rugrats one that did smell of vision was like the Rugrats movie or something. Maybe. Thing. Wait, is this a real thing? Yeah, smell of vision. They used to have like cards that they give out. I think at the movie theater, and you'd like smell what specific the fuck? things. Oh yeah. People want that immersion. I guess. There's <laughs> also 4D, strange. which I did do, and I do not recommend it. 4D, I, I mean, 4D, it, it depends. Like, for something like Welcome to Wrexham, which is a, obviously a documentary, you would not want, like, a 4D <laughs> experience because, what, what, I, I mean, unless you want to, like, smell Ryan Reynolds, I guess. Oh, th- you know, some people would be into that. Uh, I got to ask, though, what is that. 4D exactly? It's basically, like, moving chairs for a movie. I saw it oh. for, like... The Hitman's Bodyguard's Wife, or the second one in that mm. series, the Ryan Reynolds, Samuel L. Jackson movie series. The chairs were, like, moving violently. I felt a little motion sickness. Also, <laughs> some, some 4D experiences also have, like, w- like air and, like, water Yeah, yeah this one, this well one did too. some air and did, like, some heat yeah, for, for yeah. that. The, <laughs> I went, and there was, like, a couple sitting next to us, and... It started doing that for, I think, like, the trailer, like, one of yeah. the trailers. And they're like, oh, no, fuck this. And they laughed. <laughs> they laughed, they laughed oh like, immediately. God. It was great. I was like, should we do that? <laughs> like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, they sprayed water for her Spider-Man Homecoming. No, oh. Far From Home. Far, far from, from Home. Oh, for the 4D experience. That yeah. makes sense. Nice. I hated it. <laughs> you did the yeah. 4D. That's it was like, so why abstract. W- yeah, why would ab- you want to get go to the movie to get wet? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Go to an amusement park for that. Even amusement parks, though, like, I, I wouldn't want to... Like, like like Disney, right? They have, uh, was it Splash Mountain, right? Yeah. And that one, you get... Like, I've only ever been on that ride once, and you, you get soaked. You don't get soaked. So. I got soaked. And then I was walking around in wet shorts the entire day. I mean, terrible. you could get wet on pirates if you're like in the back on the edges. Like that's, that's true. The, the water will pool in, and you're just you're gonna have swamp ass all day. <laughs> Ooh. Swamp ass, <laughs> swamp ass, not slap ass, swamp ass. Yeah. But speaking of Disney, Deadpool, Ryan Reynolds, <laughs> welcome to Wrexham. Deadpool's <laughs> soccer team in England. <laughs> Who wants to sing the song? Let's uh, let's, <laughs> let's let's start right there. Actually, like the the. Marketing and the allure of this documentary was definitely helped, right, with the idea that Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I guess to kind of to, to to level set here, like the the documentary shows these two rich Hollywood actors going in together to purchase a, a, a soccer team in Wales, which is part of the United Kingdom. They purchase this team, which, you know, they uh, have been regulated or they want to get out of. Wh- which league is it? It's the National the League. The National it's League. The, the fifth tier. Right. Their whole English their whole goal of buying the team is to get them out of the National League and make them a big thing. And I think the interesting thing is with this show, the s- town in which the, they purchased the, the soccer team from, right, they very much obviously are aware of Ryan Reynolds and his whole Deadpool, and it's very much like shown quite a bit um, within there. Which obviously, what Disney had to approve, or well, FX is owned by Disney, right? So it's all, <laughs> so it's all owned by Disney. It's all a big synergy it's all play, a magical affair. It's all meta. It's all it's it's all very meta if you really think about it. Hmm. I don't want to. Well, okay, this isn't the pod for you. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, 
But we're like looking at the series as a whole, and you know, big, big, big surprise. I haven't finished it, unfortunately. Like I <laughs> did not finish. I, I have three not, episodes. Left. I'm three episodes behind. But you guys obviously have finished it. And, and the the thing with a documentary, especially a documentary that is was you know shot close to a year ago, in terms of like you know when it started and mostly finished. You know, a lot of the information about this team and everything, and and obviously the big thing of getting out of the National League. We know obviously. That didn't happen, right? We know <laughs> for that 2020 or 2021 season, they did not get out of the National League. So I'm not too, too upset that I didn't watch it. Spoiler alert. It, but <laughs> again, you, you go into this, the, to the documentary knowing that kind of already. Yeah, and I think even with the, the way they played the finale, like they play it like you know that mm-hmm. it's happening. You know, they have this, they have this semifinal match, essentially. Uh, for the knockout stage to get the two C to essentially get into ascension, and the entire last episode is that match. So you kind of know yeah. they're not going to make it out of this match. They also do these like vignettes with a lot of the different uh, people around town that they've been following all season that are kind of like these, you know, season wrap up type of like ven- vignettes and whatnot, which are very informational, very fun, but also like tipping the hand of yeah. Oh yeah, by the way. Um, they didn't do didn't it. make it out. Yeah, especially like the last <laughs> vignette, they show one of the supporters who I think was part of the trust, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the public facing um, group that owned the club before they sold it to um, the two Hollywood A listers and and Rob and Ryan, uh, and she's like, "Yeah, we lost before we like actually show the goal going," <laughs> which is a very interesting creative decision. Yeah, um, it was also just like a, it was very Hollywood esque. They really like played that last episode like it was fictional dramatized television and i mean the match played out that way right like it was a very high scoring back and forth affair with just like multiple goals scored i think the final was like five four or or six five or something like that um so it all worked and and everything but like you said i think it's always tough for documentaries in general especially like sports docs where you type if you type in "Welcome to Wrexham," yeah, you you can easily in those Google results see like their current schedule, which is what <laughs> season two is about, right? Um, Spoiler so, alert: they're so not you, in League Two, right? So you, you have to, you have to be creative in right. terms of how you present the information because it's not necessarily like new information, but you can add really good context around like the players and some of the personal stories and whatnot. It's it's interesting, like with sports docs and documentaries in general, especially when they are about events or things that happened in the past. Like I, w- I would say, some of the better documentaries that I've seen, unfortunately, are around you know murders and serial killers. <laughs> um, like obviously, the the big one that's come back up is the uh, Jeffrey Dahmer um, uh, stuff. Dumb. You know, there's the bio, the the you know the um, the Netflix, you know, fictional series or whatever with uh, the actor who plays Quicksilver. But there are also other newer documentaries that have come out sure. around that, that you know, terrible human being. And again, you can easily just Google, see the Wikipedia page and know what's happening. But yeah, it's like, how do you keep the viewer att- as viewer's attention in that docu-series, even sure. though they can easily go out and just know all the information and right. everything. So I wonder if the people work that worked on this documentary have worked on, like, Fictionalized ones, murder or like, documentaries. Before. Well, I, I would. You, I think you're conflating some of the terms a little bit. So, like the Donner one with like Quicksilver isn't a documentary, right? It's right. like a fictional dramatization. Fictional dramatization, yeah. But that, there is another is Netflix documentary, documentary right. that's out. Like there, yeah. Making a Murderer is yep. a is a documentary. That, like the very popular Netflix one um, was a uh, was this one, right? And again, like all that information you can easily find, right? How would you sum up Welcome to Wrexham in one word? Ooh. I guess I'll go because I got it. Uh, I would say multifaceted. Um, wow. So this, I thought this documentary, what set it apart from a lot of other sports documentaries is they did a great job of hitting every level of this situation of these new owners coming in to buy this team. Um they hit every level, right? So they hit the they hit the ownership, they hit the fans, they hit the players, they even hit like the psychology of sports. Um, so they really attack this thing from like all these different angles. Uh, so that's why I'm going to say multifaceted. So to piggyback off of Krishna's point on multifaceted, I feel like they reflected the style of the documentary off of 
their owners, right, Rob and Ryan, because I think they really attacked owning the team in a whole multifaceted way from the sponsorship stuff, which that was maybe the one thing I wanted to see a little bit more of, of just, like, them using their Hollywood connections to get TikTok to be, you know, a sponsor, sponsor of yeah. a, you know, a, a British, uh, you know, a, a United Kingdom soccer team in the fifth league, right? Like, that's a big sponsorship for a team that's not, you know, nationally televised. Um, Aviation Gin, obviously, being another one, which we know from Ryan owning that company was was easy. But Can I, can I make a quick question? Has anyone here tried Aviation Gin? I don't like gin. I don't Chris, like alcohol. Christian, have you tried it? Negative. So yeah, when we when we were on the cruise or our June's birthday cruise, obviously um, I got the drink package and you can have as much alcohol as your heart desires. And I decided to do like a gin ta- tasting, and I tried that uh, like some non branded like really really cheap gin, and then like <laughs> Bombay gin, which is considered like some of the best. Yeah, aviation gin is probably the worst thing I've ever tasted in my life. <laughs> <face. laughs> <Damn>. It is <laughs> so <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Uh, anyway, that, just a side note. Uh, but so I, I really liked that. I, I like Chris just one word impression because I think it reflects like top down what the organization is really doing because I think they're just trying to attack it as a whole. Even in the the finale, they said like, yeah, the the main goal is to, you know, the dream goal is to get, you know, up. But mm-hmm. the their main goal, they said for this first season was to basically bring excitement back with the team and the town, which they did, right? They successfully like closed that gap up and made it like a team that the town could be proud of. Um, so it's interesting to see how they're just kind of attacking it. And I think like, that's the, I think for me, you know, you know, you don't, you know, as much as you want to know with the Hollywood status of like Rob and Ryan. But I think it is interesting to see the business side of like, there is a business to being like a Hollywood a list actor and being successful. And I think you see some of that in the documentary. Yeah, I mean, there's there's also like the the um things like episode twelve or something where Ryan Reynolds like pops in right randomly to Wrexham because he's to do shoots to do yeah. shoots for for I think it's for Gin for the aviation engine or something else, but like it's you you see him like working where he's popping and connecting his businesses and everything. Um, also, like for the town in general, I think uh, I forget the 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 individual's name, but she was the Wrexham supporter who, like, volunteers and also works at the library, I believe. Yes, yeah, so she's the one that is was part of the trust. Right, um, right. And she said it best where she's like, you know, because towards the beginning of the documentary, they're kind of asking people in town, like, what do you think about, you know, your team being bought by, like, these, you know, Hollywood actors and da 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 yeah. And there was definitely a lot of, like, hesitation, I think, from the town. But by the end of the documentary, you know, the town loves it because, like, all business – in Wrexham uh, is going up. Like, just even tourist, uh, like, tourist um, yeah. uh, business and everything is, is skyrocketing for them because it's it's now a destination to go visit. Like, oh, this is the Ryan Reynolds, Rob, soccer team town or whatever. And, like, oh, I've seen that in the documentaries. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's a great point. And I think what's interesting is they kept in some of the criticism. Mm-hmm. So, like, the episode you mentioned of when Ryan comes, the, like, head trainer – complains about it he's like this is fucking everything up yeah and like probably doesn't make ryan reynolds look great but they still kept it in yeah right like i think that's especially because like 20 minutes later they were both taking a picture (laughs) on the pitch (laughs) so you know it's like it's it's hilarious so it's it's better that they kept it in because it's like this guy is talking smack behind the owner's backs and then 20 minutes later he's taking a picture with them yeah right (laughs) makes him look bad to be honest right it is but. it is interesting, like, speaking of the criticism, that they kept some of that stuff in. I think, like, one of the more notable ones is when Rob and Ryan visit Wrexham for the first time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're meeting all these different groups. And they get drinks with, like, some of the, <laughs> yeah. the fans. And one of the guys is like, that executive that you have in charge? So he's like, uh, oh, I don't like, or the old executive I didn't like. And then some of the other supporters are like, the, the executive they currently have in charge, we don't like him. He's treated the staff badly. Well, no, it's the manager of the team, right? Not the manager, mm-hmm. the um, the executive guy that they brought in. The bold to, guy. Yeah, right. that they the glasses who's who's done a lot of so, uh, stuff in the leagues before. But right. gotcha, uh, gotcha, yeah. they're like, oh, he he treats the support staff badly, uh, which is interesting. They just never followed up with that, though. That's, yeah, I that's thought my they would have. Like, yeah, yeah. Like there it, was also like discussion too around like the the actual. Um, 
coach or manager for the actual soccer yeah. team where a lot of the fans were like, you know, he doesn't know what he's doing. And obviously this is around when they visit. And then in the next couple of episodes, they start winning, right? And they start it's, rising. It's right around the transfer portal episode yeah. where there's this, they really centralize. That might've been the weirdest episode for me because they really sent like centralize that whole episode around. Should we keep the manager? Should we not? They're really struggling at that point. They're like, not doing very well in the standings. They have to make the decision here if they're going to go all in and, like, you know, pay exorbitant amount of money to bring somebody else in, which they end up doing by bringing in Ollie Palmer. Um, for, I think it was, like, a record transfer fee of, like, 300,000 pounds. Something like that. Or yeah. something yeah, like that. Yeah, for the National League. For yeah. the National Right. And, but they're really debating, like, should we let him go? Should we not? Because, like, if, essentially if we don't do anything, we're giving him, like, a a, a, a death sentence here of, like, Things aren't going to change, so you're just going to kind of peter out, and then we'll fire you anyway. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah. they kind of come to this rush decision at the end. They're like, oh, we decided to keep him, and we also got this guy who's going to be really good. But, I mean, it well, works out for them, right? They do rise. Yeah. They do. I mean, they they did say, it's like, well, the next 10 games will decide his fate, right? So it was like, they, they did say that. They were like, these 10 games, and how we, we'll, we'll figure it out after these 10 games. And then they show, like, the results, right? Sure. And so it, I think the they could have done a better job of making it a bit clearer, but I think it's implied by by the end of those ten games, you know he's going to stick around because they won like seven out of those ten games, lost one, tied two, or something like that. Um, right. So yeah, you're right. They could have made it a little clearer, but I think the the implication was there that he was going to stick around once they started winning. Yeah. Um, and it's all about the implication. It's all about the result. That's right. I mean, speaking, I mean, we've talked about a lot of these, like, quote unquote characters, obviously the real life people. But, you know, obviously, besides the Rob and Ryan aspect of it all, did any of you, did either of you guys have, like, a favorite person or group within the actual, like, documentary of all the Wrexham people? It's a good question. Uh, I liked, um, I liked uh, Rob's friend who ended up being sort of like the. I forget his official title, but he was kind of like the the GM, you know, the guy with uh, the big guy with the glasses. Yeah, he's the he's a writer and actor <laughs> who uh, yeah. has been part of Mythic Quest, right? And now he's now he's a football executive. Yeah. So right? I did a little research. I did a little research <laughs> on him. He actually had wa- like he had a big interest in being part of a club. Like he wanted to buy a club. He obviously didn't have the money. Oh. So I yeah, think did they say at the beginning that he went to rob? originally i don't know if that's in the no. documentary but he, that's in some that's in some of the subsequent readings gotcha. that's kind of implied that he potentially brought this idea up to rob in, McElhenney. yeah in the beginning it was at least how they framed it in the beginning yeah. is that uh he's just watching english football and rob is like what what are you so into and oh, so he's gotcha. like starts yeah. talking to him about it and then he gave Rob all this, like, this is why we love it. This is what the game's about. This is the tournament system over there. Uh, and that's what got Rob interested. Um, at least that's how they framed it in the doc. I'm sure there was more to it than that. But Yeah. But I think for me, I really, and I think this is solidified in the last few episodes. Like, I think specifically the bromance one. But I like the groundskeeper and the, like, mm. assistant groundskeeper. Yeah. Like, they had to – I kind of wish there was more with them and yeah. just kind of banter. And also just, like, there's something always inherently interesting about the, you know, the quote-unquote oh, – I guess what people refer to as, like, the small people or the people who do, like, some of the, the you know, the behind-the-scenes type of stuff, the grounds crew, stuff. the day-to-day stuff. And I thought, like, their dynamic was really interesting. And I think, like – Probably the most similar thing here is baseball in terms of like keeping up with the the entire pitch and everything. Mm-hmm. But it's the same thing with soccer, like keeping that pitch pristine. in tip top shape yeah. and pristine is like really really important and can like really make or break your home games <laughs> in Some a results. lot of ways. Yeah, and results it can cost you can cost you wins, right? Yeah, uh, I already know Rabbit's favorite group. Rabbit's favorite group. <laughs> Wait, what are? The hooligans. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, that, I mean, to be honest, that was my favorite episode. Like, I think it, because of a couple of reasons, it made it the doc. Like, the thing with this documentary is there are definitely episodes where it just felt kind of too jokey. Like the episode where they do the infomercial about whales just felt a little bit too Ryan Reynolds. It's probably the best way to explain <laughs> it. And that you know that's not a good or nor bad thing. Like, I I just think it 
takes you out of the whole documentary experience. While like the hooligans episode was cool and interesting because it showed like a regular fan of the team and then also gave some kind of like context and history to like why people act a certain way around soccer games and also ties into like what actually happened at one of their games and how the city's, you know, police chief and everything have to be involved and on the lookout for, you know, idiots essentially. Right. I know we still have the two more wor- one word impressions to do, but oh yeah. On the who on the hooligans front, did you guys find it interesting that like one of the hooligans like actually decided to be interviewed and part of the documentary? Well, he's a reformed Well, he he was like, right, yeah. He, <laughs> I he don't know if he really he is, though, based off like of what they... Years. I don't know if, like, he is from what they showed. Like, he, Well, they, show, they showed a lot of the old stuff, and I yeah. thought they made it pretty clear. It's like, yeah, that was my old anymore. life. Yeah. Uh, he misses it, and he doesn't regret anything he did, but right. he doesn't participate anymore. I was really, con- yeah. I was, I was really confused about like the relationship he had with a person who was like trying to become a police officer, and then like st- her still sticking with him, even though like he essentially cost her like her the career. chance that at that <laughs> career. It's like, but wait, you're still with this dude? Yeah, <laughs> that part was a little love is love weird. Man. Yeah, uh, it's something. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's what are you gonna do? You can't change someone. You can only compromise i guess i don't know and that's going to lead into my one word impression which is love <laughs> <laughs> because the, basically the documentary is let's be honest the documentary is just really a big uh a love story a, a big love story between rob and ryan that's it <laughs> the, so- the the whole Wrexham soccer thing is just kind of like a, a side story the real thing is is their love their love for each other and you know patting themselves on the back which you know to a degree like i feel like the documentary does like a lot of that where it is like a lot of like good job and it's oh i don't know i don't know about that because uh i will say this this documentary made me like ryan reynolds a lot like his insecurity and his anxiety i thought came through so well in this documentary um interesting the fact that he's a people pleaser the fact that you know, he like even even when they lost, it was I thought the funniest part of this whole thing was Rob and Ryan going around to every play and being like, oh, it's OK, man. You know, it's fine. You you gave it your all. Like they're like, I, I read owners, that. Yeah. How usually like that. The hard asses, they like right. want results. It's like money speaks. And then these two guys are like, it's going to be OK, man. I read that. Like, I read that differently. The, the person I thought of the two that looked way better or I had a lot more appreciation for was Rob uh, McElhenney because. He was the one to me that got it way more than Ryan Reynolds yeah, did. Same. Because, like, oh, yeah. Ryan, Ryan always consistently said, like, I played sports, but, like, I don't watch sports. Like, I don't understand this world of sports. While Rob, like, very he's, cool. he's an Eagles fan. He's an Eagles fan. Yeah. Like, if you watch Sunny in Phil- Always Sunny in Philadelphia, like, he, he, they, he always incorporates sports into those stories and everything. So I think, like, he really he got the sports stuff. And, um, oh, yeah, he definitely did. And yeah. I, I thought, I'm just saying, I, I, I'm just I, saying. Yeah, but I thought even just coming out of it with the with the two of them, I I came away with like a bigger appreciation for him in terms of just even though he's like not a Hollywood A lister like Ryan Reynolds, which movie is, money, which is a great joke that they have throughout the whole documentary, right? They're like, oh, Deadpool and the other guy, right? Yeah, <laughs> Rob. Yep. Uh, you, you know, even despite having that difference in stature, like I thought Rob was just like the better businessman actually oh, yeah, between no, the two. Undoubtedly. Yeah. But that's why that's why I prefer that's why I was like more drawn to Ryan because Rob came across as like the more typical business owner, to be honest. Like he was the one driving the whole thing. He was the one who's like, you know, this is the plan. He was the the big picture guy, the yeah. guy who's driving it. Yeah. And I thought Ryan Ryan just came across as more of a human to me. At least and what I mean by that is that my view of Ryan before this documentary was, you know, A-list Hollywood actor. After this documentary, I'm like, no, he's a guy who suffers from, like, all the normal human stuff. I mean, they all do, right? But right. I mean, isn't that, that, they that say really that, came yeah, through. About, like, Hollywood actors in general, they all have some type of anxiety or... I mean, I think everybody, oh, yeah. everybody does. I don't. Some yeah. way they, no but they try to hide it, right? And this documentary <laughs> didn't. Yeah, that's they, true. They really leaned into it. Yeah. Like, they're like, this is... This is this is how much stress it's causing both of them. Right. Yeah. Because it so. makes a lot of. I mean, at the end of the documentary, right? It's pretty obvious that the team is not in the green. They are not making money still. 
they are losing money. Uh, the nice thing though is when you have a diverse financial portfolio, if one business <laughs> is losing money, you still have other businesses making money. Aviation gin. Aviation gin. Aviation gin. <laughs> it tastes like <laughs> shit. I, w- <laughs> I will. I will say. What well, have you ever seen the H- when Hugh Jackman made an aviation gin commercial like oh, yeah. at the height of their feud? I mean, he was right. It's great. <laughs> he's just like aviation gin. He just like pours it on the ground. He's like, it's shit. I heard it tastes okay. <laughs> No, it's no. disgusting. <laughs> Don't ever drink it. Uh, I what, think this what was Hugh? Sorry, go oh, ahead, Christian. I was going to ask during that whole thing, what was Hugh Jackman's uh, business that Ryan Reynolds was then also? He like, has they a vodka or something. He has another oh, spirit. spirit. It, was, it was something. Yeah. yeah, he has another spirit of some kind. Uh, well, uh, there were a lot of cameos in the finale for all the people at the match. There was like Sudeikis, Will Ferrell, Kit Harrington. I was kind of surprised Hugh Jackman wasn't there. Do you think do you think Ryan Reynolds invited him but he couldn't make it? Yeah, scheduling conflict, definitely. Yeah, because that, that's such a that was such a missed opportunity. He was too busy starting production on Deadpool three. <laughs> oh, but Ryan resonated for that. <laughs> <laughs> what if he was right. there? But that, I mean he could have been and they just didn't show him for some reason. Or he was like hidden. Hidden. Hidden, yeah. He was oh, he's like Ryan a, Reynolds. He, yeah. He's an Easter egg. But I think yeah, this leads. Go back and look for him. I think this will lead to my one word impression, which is uh, Meta. You can't use that name. Facebook will sue you. Copyrighted. <laughs> we <laughs> can't use it. And the reason is because all the discussion is on Facebook. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 nice. People use Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I use Meta, and I think Christian touched on this point a little bit of like Ryan and Rob. What's always interesting about documentaries. At least for me, maybe I'm completely alone on this point, is the performance part of it, right? Like, documentaries, in theory, are supposed to be, like, real-life representation right. or something. But as we all know, there's someone behind the editing and the making of this story, right? So, like, even though these are real-life events and real-life things that people said, we've all worked in media long enough to know you can cut things up, you can omit things, you can... You can present things in ways to tell a certain narrative that you want to tell, right? Right. And for me, right, Rob and Ryan are making this documentary. They are the they are the two that are behind this. They approve everything. And so it, it's hard even when we talk about, like, Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhinney of, like, oh, yeah, we really liked them. It's like there's this meta-ness to this where it's like everything we see is what they want us to mm. see, right? It's not like – yeah. We're just getting here are the three thousand hours of uncut footage and like everything we're showing. The peeing bit was also hilarious, by the way, when uh, they just kept uh, Ryan's mic on when he's peeing oh, oh, yeah. in the, in the, the thing. <laughs> that was funny, uh, <laughs> but there's that meta ness to it where it's like, oh, I want to like these guys, but like is also part of this. You know, they're like, oh, we're doing this all for the good of Wrexham and whatever and whatever. But it's like also part of it is to like build your own personal brands. <laughs> I mean, so do you, wait, I, I got I to gotta ask then, Arjuna. So do you think then there's like like a footage that will never see the light of the day and it's just like Ryan Reynolds being like, I fucking hate whales. <laughs> 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 they're probably, I mean, there I, might be. I, I hate whales. got to be, yeah. Bob. I hate yeah. it's always sunny in Philadelphia. I hate the Eagles. <laughs> I would not be surprised if there are parts of – when Ryan and Rob visited um, Wales and Wrexham, I would not be surprised if there are parts where Ryan is just like, "Oh, another fucking Deadpool costume, woohoo!" Oh, like I'm sure yeah. there, I'm sure to a degree, there's a part of him probably that's just like, "I'm tired of only being associated with Deadpool." Mm, right. <laughs> like at some point, sure. it wears on you, right? But I mean, look, if you put a camera on anyone right. for 24 hours a day, seven days yeah. a week, 365 days a year. There's going to be bad shit. You're yeah. going to say something stupid. Yeah. You're going to do something that people are like, that's not cool. Or like, You're going to get irritated. Yeah, you're going to get yeah. irritated, whatever. So it's like, it's this highly curated thing that they're in charge of. Like, it's their documentary, right? It's not like a third-party crew came in and like, we just followed them around. Right. It's like, this is FX and Disney, which own, you know, which are invested in their careers because Souls. it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Deadpool. Like, yeah. <laughs> these are big money makers. So it also doesn't behoove FX and Disney to be like, show these guys in bad lights. Right, either. of course. So I, that's just like there's that whole meta ness to the entire thing where you're just like, wait, this is real, but like, <laughs> is it real? Yeah, right. Yeah. It's um, very yeah, it's very much well, curated, it's, right? So yeah, you'll 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 ne- you never get like an objective look because 
people are making stuff, right? So yeah, and then there's also yeah. like it's always a viewpoint. There's always I think we talked about this with the the people in Wrexham, right? Like they are also performing it, uh, and this is true of any documentary and any type of anything that's captured, right? You are performing, right? right. You're perform. Like, we when we do this podcast, we're like, oh, we're three brothers hanging out, but we're performing for yeah. This we don't podcast. like each other. Right? I hate your guests. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not performing. That's but when the cam- as soon as the camera goes off, we immediately turn off the cameras and go fuck you. Fuck yeah, we we actually don't look each other in the eyes. We all hate like we're like you. We're like we're like your one more impression. That was dog <laughs> shit. Do better. <laughs> do better, donkey. <laughs> I want you off the fucking. Set. I heard Gordon Ramsay doesn't look anyone in the eye once the camera's off. Just joking. I mean, that feels like that would be real. Actually. That's what people have said about Kitchen Nightmare. I've heard like this thing. So, you know, real I've, big met, I've met Gordon Ramsay. You did? I met him years ago when I worked at the Santa Monica Apple Store. Yeah. He came in oh, with I his son. This. Yeah, he came in with his son, and his son had broken his iPhone. Oh. Yeah, and okay. his and his son was like, oh, yeah, it was, you know, his broken phone was like two hundred bucks. Where to get it fixed? And the son looks at, at Gordon, and Gordon's like, "You have money, pay him." I've heard. I oh, have heard this about yeah, Gordon Ramsay. But like the thing with Gordon in that moment is like. His eyes are scary. Like he's oh, a very sure. intense human being. <laughs> like I was, I felt uncomfortable. Like it, it's not my phone. It's not my money. It's nothing to do with you me. You should have been like, yes, chef. I, Sorry, <laughs> chef. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> chef. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. I'll clean the station right away. Like I really just wanted to be like, I will just give you a new phone because I want to get out of this situation. Like it's oh very uncomfortable. God, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Ready? are you uh, real quick? I gotta ask. Uh, yeah. Do you have a favorite? When you were working in the Apple Store specifically, because you've met, you've come across a few, yeah. you know, bigger names. Do you have a favorite? I think my favorite is still Ray Liotta. Oh, oh, oh Ray how Liotta did that was go? yeah, that was a gr- an intense one because I know obviously like Ray Liotta, you know, he was in uh, Goodfellas, yeah. and you know he plays like that. You know, he's also the voice of the the guy from Tommy Versetti from Grand Theft Auto, Auto Vice, and he City. plays like you know that mafia mob guy, and you would think, oh, he's just playing that on TV. No, that's his personality. <laughs> like that was, that was what. Like when he came in, that's who he was, and it was again one of those things where I was like, I just want to give you something for free, and I just want to leave the situation. <laughs> Didn't you also be Paul Pierce? I nah in uh, in yeah uh, in, out in Boston, in Boston uh, yeah right? in Boston, yeah, and uh, Shaq as well when he was uh, with nice. them for that minute or for, whatever for a cup of tea for a cup of tea, yeah, literally. Yeah. But yeah, I think Ray was my favorite because it was like, nice. wow, you. Were that you know individual. So if you combine our one words into a sentence and rearrange it a little bit, it's multifaceted meta love. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's pretty <laughs> meta. Multifaceted that sounds meta. like a, a screamo rock band. <laughs> probably, probably, Pro- probably. Let's uh, l- let's talk about the future of Wrexham, um, specifically not just the team, but I think. I think the other interesting factor of the document is we're following characters in the town. Uh, ones that stand out, obviously, are like the people that are p- were part of the trust. We're following them. There's my favorite is the two older ladies having tea, mm. oh, consistently talking too. about whatever. And again, and again, like the very first time we saw that, I was like, this feels a little staged, but I hope it's not um, because it does feel a little genuine. But I think the 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 people in the town that I'm more interested in is the owner of the uh, the, the pub. Because he, at one point, looks like they start mm. a podcast. Yeah. Has anyone followed up to actually, like, listen to the podcast? Because I'm curious, like, I mean, I would imagine it's it's a typical soccer podcast, which there sure. are thousands and millions of. Um, but I would be curious to see, like, where that podcast, like, ratings and downloads have gone since the show was, like, mm. aired. But I guess, Exploded, like, where, yeah, where do you think – do you think – for like a season two, are we gonna see new people? Or are we follow the same people? I would assume that's probably gonna be a mix. Like I'm sure we're gonna follow some of the familiar characters while introducing new people that kind of come along. I'm sure. I haven't checked like what Wrexham has done, but I'm sure they've added more players that they'll kind of follow around. I, I think some of my favorite stuff um, that they showed, and this was more in the first half of the season, was uh, just showing some of the like families of the different players. Um, and just kind of their personal lives and whatnot. And I thought, like, really diving into, like, who they were off the field. Because, again, that's – you can watch the games to find out, like, what kind of player they are and, like, yeah. if they score lots of goals in their their style. But I think getting that, that kind of background about who they are um, and kind of what they're playing for um, is definitely very interesting. So, mm. yeah, I, I hope for some more of that type of stuff and just 
more follow-ups there um, in terms of kind of what's going on. I'm kind of curious to see if, like, Ollie Palmer and um, what's his name, uh, Paul Mullen, like, stuck around after this season. Like, I wasn't – I think they kind of referenced their contracts a little bit, but I can't remember – what they were I'm, and you know if, i'm you know what what the deal is there for all for i think them. both of them are multi-season okay. yeah i'm i'm pretty sure they're both there for a couple years at least yeah i mean for what they paid i would i would hope they didn't just do like a one season yeah. deal i think the the one player i'm the, the situation i'm most the, the most interesting situation to follow up for season two is the goalkeeper situation mm, yeah because he got Rob the injury. yeah because layton yeah. was like a huge part of their their team and then you could argue the reason they lost was because their backup goalkeeper like kind of choked dibble kind of choked right and that was you know we haven't really seen the follow-up to this game in terms of did, did he get cut right yeah. like is he was he still around for the beginning of the season like how do his how did his team kind of respond to that um so I think yeah be being the goalie kind of that, that was another good Sucks. episode like <laughs> it is it is the worst the worst job in sports you, is you, being a goalie yeah. a goalie field goal kicker field goal kick, yeah um uh, hockey closer goalies. closers hockey goalies yeah those are the, a, those are the type of roles where you're known for two things you're either the very best yep or the uh, worst or, or you're costing the team yeah games. or you're not you're the worst you you choke yeah. those are the only you're two choking, times you're yeah. known <laughs> that's wild that seems like they're relaxing like you don't have to run as much. <laughs> don't have to like. Yeah. You sit down. So most physically, of the time. maybe, but mentally, very stressful. Yeah. That's gotta be. They they say those types of players have the most anxiety. Yeah. And like the best ones are a little like loose. Oh, they're in insane. The head. Yeah. Oh, they're insane. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember uh, Juno? Who was who was the um the goalie on the Bruins from Vermont? Uh, who during during the cup run did when they won the cup? Uh, what was his oh name? before Tuukka Rask. Before Tuka Rask, yeah. I Wait, forget sorry, his name. Was the he, last was, name? he was insane. Rask. Mm-hmm. Rask was the goalie after. Oh, this not guy. Tuka Rask. Tuka. Tuka? Tuka Rask. Tuka Rask. That's such a cool name. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a great, great play. Uh, I think for season two, because Arjuna's right, right? L- Rob and Ryan know exactly what they're doing. And the fact that the show is a little bit meta, there's no way that they're not going to touch on um, the success of the first season and how that has impacted the making of the second season. Uh, so I would, I would imagine like they touch upon like how um, the crowds of the games maybe have gone up uh, the access that they're given because of the success of the first season probably goes up, um, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, more, I, I bet we see way more celebrity, uh, way more celebrity, celebrity appearances, um, Hugh Jackman. I think, yeah, huge. Yeah, if Hugh Jackman doesn't appear in the second season, it'd be a waste. <laughs> I think. I mean, I guess these are kind of like bull predictions. So, I think for me, the big one that we're gonna see next season, I think there's gonna be a lot more synergy, synergy. with the Disney machine. Like, I think we're gonna no. see more stuff around Always Sunny. I think we're gonna see tons of stuff around Deadpool three, Marvel, Marvel, and Star Wars, and maybe even Star Wars. I mean. I would love it if the first episode is just a shot of the pitch and TIE fighters and Thanos coming out of a portal. I think that'd be <laughs> hilarious. I, I will I will say, I think the <laughs> funniest part of the, or one of the funniest parts of the whole thing was that quick cold open where Rob's friend is trying to film a TikTok or an audition. Uh, it was an audition, oh, an audition for audition. Star Wars. Yeah. And, for Obi-Wan. Yeah. And they, they put in all the, the laser and the, the music yeah. as he's just trying to shoot this video. Well, I love that uh, they did do the follow up of like, he did not get the role. <laughs> yeah, he did, he did not get <laughs> the role. I was trying to think of like, did he get it? No. Nope. I was like, yeah. no, I don't nope. think he did. He and then it's like, he did not get it. I'm he like, should have. Yeah. He would have been great. It's amazing though, like, like from like actor, writer, producer to like, Football exec. A football like, like that's a career. Yeah. <laughs> like, jeez. Yeah, that guy is living it up. Yeah. It's great. I think my more cynical side for so Christian, your bold prediction is like the more cameos references to season one for season two. Yeah, and, and yeah, just them um yeah, dealing directly addressing the success of the first season yeah. and how it impacts the second season. Yeah. And, and mine is specifically Thanos shows up. <laughs> Whether that's Thanos or Josh Brolin. No, Kang. Kang, yeah, Jonathan Majors. Mephisto. No, Mephisto. Mephisto. Mephisto shows up. Sasha Baron Cohen. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take a more cynic, cynical view. What, uh, you? For no. a bold prediction. And it's not necessarily about season two, but it's about, like, Rob and Ryan's 
uh, mm. entire deal with owning Wrexham, with doing the documentary. And that is their goal is to get this team – and you're already seeing it with sales and such around the team. Get it as profitable as possible and sell it. Whoa. You think they're actually going like, to give it up? Yeah, absolutely. Like, Do you think these guys want to continue to go like to Wrexham, Wales for like 20 to 30 years? No, but you want to get the <laughs> business like sufficient and in the green. And then just like there's like – I would argue with Ryan's other businesses, where was sure. it Cricket, the cell phone thing, yeah, and then Aviation Gin. He's not running those day to day, for sure. And even Wrexham, they're not running day to day. I think, I don't know that they'll sell it. I think the documentary will end, but they'll still own it. I don't think they will. I think once that doc wraps, their ownership stake wraps. Dang. Mm. And I think I think I mean it's a bold prediction. I think their yeah. goal, and I think the goal—it's very nice what they're trying to do for Wrexham and like to get it profitable. <laughs> it's very nice. And I think it's you know it, it is very going nice. to help. It's going to help a lot of people. It's going—they're yeah. helping that club, but like they're also smart and they're also helping themselves first. Well, yeah, right. And, and they like, both have a lot of other stuff. Going yeah, on. and look, we talk like Rob. I think Rob's ultimate goal, like many sports owners, is to own. Bigger sports teams, right? You always you see any sports owner, they start as a minority shareholder in a smaller club, and then they'll sell, that and then stake. they sell that stake higher to get a bigger stake in another team, and a bigger stake in another team to eventually become what a principal owner in a big, big market so team. So let me get this right. So a BFT. Then, so I'll take a step further. Then, yeah. so it's not that the documentary ends; it's the documentary title changes, and it's called Welcome to. Manchester, Manchester United. No, no, welcome, <laughs> no, no. Welcome to Los Angeles Lakers. I mean, oh, no, th- uh, that's that that's that franchise is not selling anytime soon. I mean, why would you, I mean? Not, very few of those big ones will ever sell. Yeah, no, definitely. They're, they unless there's a money. scandal involved involving yeah. an owner, right? Or right, they just. So then, how many seasons? One more season, two, three, four. I, I would say there's a five-year plan. Oh wow! So I'm going to go four more seasons. I mean, that does get us through phase. four. Five and six of the Marvel <laughs> Cinematic Universe. So, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Phase seven. Welcome to Wrexham, the movie. Ooh. Now in the MCU. Yeah. Fuck Do you yeah. think Wrexham will show up in Deadpool 3? Yes. 100%. Oh, yeah. At least yeah. some of those players. Something. Don't write a bit. Is that, some cameo. Is this our first group bold prediction? Yeah, I think so. Because <laughs> Deadpool is so meta. It's so, or, not, you know, they yeah. love breaking the fourth wall and bringing in all that stuff. So... Absolutely. And also, like, again, like, we know that these guys are building this, this, these synergy empires, if you will. Why wouldn't you put Wrexham in Deadpool 3? Because then Deadpool is an international, will be an international, um, I was going to say, yeah, best, best picture or whatever, right? And then all of a sudden, Wrexham is now on the map even more because of this movie. Uh, that's just going to help the Wrexham club, right? Like, I would not be surprised. If there was like some kind of weird uh, Deadpool Wrexham kit that comes out at some point, right? It's true. I like, mean, they had the Philadelphia Eagles kit yeah. in this first. Yeah. This I mean, and that's yeah. just something you have to talk to to Marvel Disney about, and like, hey, we got this soccer thing and money, yay! I mean, a Deadpool Wrexham kit. Oh, I'd buy would that. Sell really well. I would buy. <laughs> I'd buy a couple of those. Yeah, I don't. I don't like kits. I think they're very uncomfortable. <laughs> I still buy it. <laughs> this is comfortable. It's not really a kit, but it's it's comfortable. <laughs> I mean the the England one I have, that's just pretty comfortable actually. Yeah, it's not bad. I thought you guys were talking about like mystery boxes. <laughs> <laughs> a kit is a shirt. Isn't <gasps> yeah, it? it's the jersey. Oh, okay. the oh, call, call Deadpool in, in mystery in box at Comic Con. I mean, I'm sure they have those. They definitely have those. When we go they to LA Comic Con, I'll buy you one and. Uh, yeah. I'll actually, actually speaking it. of Kit, did it, anyone else find it funny? I think it was Ryan. I forget if it was Ryan or Rob, but David Beckham was in the finale too. And one of them turns to Kit and they're like, David Beckham, like, he played pretty well, right? He was like a big player. Like, I think that was like the gist of what they said. And Kit Harrington's like, oh, yeah. He was like, he's like, I grew up idolizing him. <laughs> it, was like, it, was probably Will, it was probably Will Ferrell who said, who said it was like, probably said that, right? No, no, no. It was either Rob or Ryan. That oh, said that's oh, a Kit Harrington to play. Oh, David I see. Beckham, like, he's a pretty big player, right? Like, he played. <laughs> Kit Harrington's like, yeah. yeah fun, <laughs> fact, fun fact about David Beckham. Uh, I think he is a min- minority owner in 
Miami FC uh, MLS team, which I think started this year or will start next year. I, I, th- I think they even reference his owning a team because they ask. They, I think they both ask Beckham of like, "Hey, do you go down?" <laughs> <laughs> wow! No, wow, go wow, down wow. to the locker room after <laughs> to talk. You're to not the making players. it better. Do you go down, Jesus. David Beckham? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Spice, Spice, yes, he does. <laughs> are they still married? Yeah. Oh yeah. Really? <laughs> Jeez. Oh, they are. It's all of, uh, uh, spo- uh, Depends. Posh Spice. She was posh. Well, speaking of David Beckham, there's the new Disney Plus show documentary show that's coming out where David Beckham is going to help a youth soccer league in East London um, avoid hopefully regu- um, being regulated as well. And I believe he played for this East London soccer team when he was a, a youth. When he was a lad. When he was a lad, yeah. I have one final question for all of you before we get into the league question. Oh, okay. Does this <laughs> show make you guys want to own a sports team with Yes. Me? Yes. Yeah. Was it, it good as going to buy the New England Patriots? I feel after this season we get them dirt cheap. <laughs> there's, there's no. No. Way. Wow, <laughs> they're, 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 they're one of the ten richest franchises. Oh no, I, I know. But <laughs> we're pretty rich. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have uh, you've seen this, but so many people are buying a pickleball professional pickleball teams. Wait, first of all, I didn't even know that was a, such a thing. I didn't think professional pickleball. It's a, it's was a, a thing. it's a new. Why league. would you admit that? The pickle, on air? the pickleball league is a <laughs> new is a new league that's being formed. I think LeBron James, Tom Brady, and some other big athletes have already invested. And there's only two reasons that this could happen. One, <laughs> there's real money behind this. Or two, someone's got a lot of dirt on these athletes. <laughs> <laughs> you just named a lot of old retired athletes. LeBron Neither of those James players are retired. Yeah. In quiet retired. No, they haven't quietly retired. <laughs> no, yeah. They're, they're loudly, what? They're loudly what? still clinging on to play. People yeah. want them both to retire. Don't get me wrong, but they're like, Their no, bodies want them to I'm retire. I'm not retiring. They're like, I refuse to retire. <laughs> they Same. have. They just don't know it. <laughs> well, Tom Brady did retire and then unretired, and now he's getting divorced because of it. Who was saying so. it? He's essentially Goku? Uh, There's a social I media. Mean, he found a post that was like basically like uh, Tom Brady thinks he's Goku in the sense that you know Goku obviously ran away from his family multiple times to like train and become the best fighter. <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> my favorite. Uh, speaking of Dragon Ball Z, I know the internet hates me because of my Dragon Ball <laughs> your Dragon Ball take. But I will say one of the funniest things in Dragon Ball Z is Goku dies obviously after the Cell Saga, right? And then he comes back and he has his ten year old son, and Chi Chi's like, "I have someone for you to meet." This is your son, Goten. He's like, oh, hi, Goten. And I think that he never really says anything else to his son. (laughs) That's not true. They're in the background talking. You just don't hear it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Dragon Ball's going to go the way of like Star Wars at some point and show you all the in-between moments. Is his son going to kill him? Sure. (laughs) Why not? Goten's too weak. (laughs) I mean, he he went super sane like with an argument with his mom. Yeah, that's true. Wait, but isn't yeah. he the one from Super who was supposedly more powerful than his? No, that's Gohan. Gohan. That's Gohan. Gohan. Goten, is Goten the was the son. one who fused. He and became that fat blob. Trump. Became the fat blob. Goten, <laughs> imperfect Goten. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and Michael saw the movie. <gasps> I'm so lost. He was the guy that was lounging and sleeping? No, no, no. no, no that no, was no. Majibu. Majibu. Okay, yeah. there were these two, like, uh, preteen teen two kids. Youths. And they did, like, they did, like, this little dance, and then they became one thing. But uh, they, they, were, they were overweight. But um, they were, yeah. And they weren't as effective. They had, like, oh. purple hair on yeah. the sides and black hair. And, and they were the we ones that this. kept fusing into something inappropriate. Like, not yeah. inappropriate, but, you know, like, not... Not a, ideal. Ideal, yeah. They For were, a yes. Not term. ideal. Because they messed, they messed up the dance. Yeah. So. Okay, I didn't catch that. Yeah. But now I do. Thanks. <laughs> you, you got For it. For more Dragon Ball takes... Follow Arjuna on Twitter at <laughs> yeah specifically what is your Arjuna. Twitter handle Arjuna Ramgopal. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the internet hates him for this one trick, which is weird because he doesn't say in the thing that he hates all of Dragon Ball. He says he hates Dragon Ball or doesn't want to watch Dragon Ball Super. Wait, who? It was a very that. measured take, but there were there were multiple comments that are like, "You're stupid." Arjuna I hates all of Dragon Ball no, Z. Go, no, Michael, no. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, internet. all press is good press, right? It's true. It's very true. And with that, let's ask the question. Krishna, you haven't started in a while, so you can go first. Oh, okay. Ravi, 
Hello. Was season one of Welcome to Wrexham good? You know, when I first started watching it, I was not a fan. And I was going to tell you all that I don't want to talk about this. But then around episode like four or five is where it like really picked up. And it wasn't just this uh, circle jerk. So yes, it was good. <laughs> because it circle wasn't a circle jerk. jerk. Arjuna was welcome to Deadpool, the sequel. Hey, bring on the Deadpool and Rob McElhenney. <laughs> <laughs> and Rob McElhenney. Great song. Uh, was it good? Uh, it was good. It was uh, an interesting experience, but it kept me coming back each week, and I was excited to watch it and kind of see. And I think my allegiances to different portions of the documentary changed as it went on. I was interested in some of the Hollywood stuff. I was interested in the, the people around Rex. I was interested in the game. So I think, like, there wasn't one singular part where I was just, like, kind of groaned or, like, wanted or kind of, like, tuned out or wanted to fast forward. I thought, like, the multifaceted look, to steal Christian's one word, uh, really helped because I think all of it was interesting. Also, shout out to the release schedule. Like, I'm very happy that they released multiple episodes each like week. two, right? It was on average either three or four episodes but, yeah. at a time, which was oh. great. It yeah. definitely helped keep you invested. And it also felt like each week you were getting like a mini movie. They also themed it well, right? Because there, yeah. there was like one week they did one episode, but it worked because it was a longer episode and it like yeah. thematically it worked. And so I, I don't think they were, I think, because this came out, I think, on both Hulu and Disney+. Plus. And they weren't necessarily beholden to, like, it has to be X number of episodes each and every week. It was like, actually, this is creatively what works best, where you can group these episodes together and these episodes yeah. together. And uh, I kind of hope more shows take that cue. And they're like, actually, this is what works best for our show, not what work, works best for the network. your programming grid. Yeah. Krishna, thank you for your time. <laughs> thank you. Was Welcome to Wrexham. Season one. <laughs> Does your brain just flatline? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just thought it's a dramatic pause. Oh, okay. I asked that the question. Christian. Oh, you did? Yeah, I said, was Welcome to Rex's <laughs> oh, I didn't hear, dramatic I didn't hear pause. The end of that Season question. one, good. Wow. Oh. I <laughs> yeah, had a good part. I loved it. I loved that it tackled all levels of owning and running and being a fan of and playing at a football team in England. Uh, I'm curious to see, like, a lot of season one felt like, um, kind of like lore building. Like, this is Wales. Uh, this is what everything means. You know, a lot of learning in season one. So I am curious to see, uh, how they fill season two. Um, cause there's a lot of good context added to season one where they can't just repeat it for season two. Right. So I'd be curious to see creatively how they try and change season two, because I would imagine they want to keep the same number of episodes, maybe, we'll see. Um, so just how they fill up some of that stuff, because we already know now, after you've seen season one, we already know uh, the tournament structure and the league structure and yeah. uh, Wales. You know, I wonder, curious to say if they do a follow-up to the here, learn about Wales episode right. type of thing. So I, I'm, I, I am curious. I think what will be interesting about season two is, you know, there's really only two ways that can go for the season result. They either get promoted or they don't get promoted again, mm. right? And so you have to imagine if they don't get promoted again, maybe season two is more of a follow-up of, okay, we've brought in all this money, we've brought in all of this talent, and we've done as much as we can, but we're still not getting the result that we need. And so you probably, that season two then probably needs to be what changes, right? right? Versus, okay, if they... If they go and they win and they go through, I think then it's about celebrating that, but also like, okay, now we're in the next tier. What's next? Do we know everybody? when a season two is coming or we don't? We don't know. I mean, like we're in the middle of the season. We're in like early part, like early quarter of the season right now. Right. So like spoiler alert, you can check what their record is. Yeah. Uh, can I, can we, can we reveal? Yeah. Right go for it. Yeah. They're currently record. They're, current I believe, record. second in the league, correct? They are second. Yeah. They're one point behind first place. Right. They have nine wins, two ties, and two losses. So they're doing a lot better than lot they were better. a year ago right. because they have and they've, the they've pieces scored, in place. They've scored the most goals by a lot. So they have 38 uh, goals scored on the season, and second place is 31 goals scored. Damn. 
and they've uh, they've only they've allowed 15 for a goal differential of 23 goals yeah. in 13 games, which is that's nuts. So again, I I would say then if they don't make it this season, especially with the start that they're up to, everything they've put into this team, you have to think the happy go lucky vibes end in a lot of ways because it's like are they just going to repeat the same thing again, yeah. hoping for a better result? That's what Ted Lasso did. <laughs> but that's a fictional Ooh. show. <laughs> this well, is real life. Well, maybe, business. maybe, maybe there's uh, <laughs> there's somebody else though that we don't we're not aware of that like some other Hollywood actors that bought like another <laughs> team in the National League <laughs> and they're pumping it full of money <laughs> and players. Yeah. Oh, so that so, would be a fascinating like follow up document. Yeah. Or fir- first place is Knotts County. So maybe uh, Hugh Jackman bought Knotts County. Oh my this god, that would be oh. fucking. That would be hilarious. <laughs> so. Did this documentary teach us that money is what buys sports teams yes. wins? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It definitely taught us and that. I don't that, think was, that was no secret, though. But that I think was, what they're trying like, to really talk about is, like, the money can only get you so far. You have to build it. You have to bring in the, the right culture. people. Because is that true? Yeah, absolutely. Well, because yeah. Wrexham chemist- existed right before this. They weren't any good. And then all of a sudden, Hollywood comes in. They're like, we got millions. Let's throw it at you. And now they're second place. Yeah. I mean, I think that, I mean, I think that works to a degree. But I think then if they didn't make it, they don't make it for a second season. Then clearly just throwing all the money doesn't work because you can go from last to second, but you're still not going up in the league, right? Second place is first loser. Exactly. Yep. So then you they have to then really dissect, okay, do we have the right people in place to actually get this thing over the hump? They fire everybody, start I mean they could fresh. they could, right? Like you've yeah. seen you've seen worse from other sports owners. That's true. And you look you see it like in a lot of American sports teams too. Like everyone at the NFL level is Uber Uber rich. These right. are like the top fifty richest people in the world, right? And Bad franchises stay bad because people just throw, like, you know, not to dunk on the Jacksonville Jaguars, but <laughs> last year they are like, who is the most well-known coach out there that we can hire? Urban Meyer. We're going to bring Oof. him in. He didn't even last a full season because he was fucking terrible. Yeah. So, like, and they gave him a huge contract, and we're like, this is going to work. We have the number one pick. This is a generational prospect. We're going to pick him. They won, like, two, three games last year. Yeah. So money doesn't, doesn't always, always work, right? right? And right. to just to piggyback off of that, the dr- the the drama around the two Hollywood actors bringing in all this money is that they're operating like in the red. Right. They're losing money, and you can only do that for so long. Right, so if right. they don't get promoted again this year, they're they're like millions and millions and millions of dollars in the hole, and they're still not promoted to a league where they can start making revenue, bring in revenue for the club to become sustainable. Deadpool so four. that's sort of like <laughs> they need to do it, and they need to do it soon. Yeah. Because look, uh, uh, as much as th- again, it's a feel good story if they want to help this town, they are businessmen. Like yeah. th- that's their primary role with <laughs> with this team, and it's not good business to keep operating millions and millions of dollars in debt if you're not changing the result. Right. So Here's money well money. spent Pissing it or an endless supply of money is what wins games. Pretty much. Yeah. Absolutely. And thank you for that. With that, that's gonna do it for us here on Was It Good. Our next pod will most likely be on Hot D. Hot D. Hot D. <laughs> House of Dragon. House Spoiler of Dragon. alert. I was surprised by this season. Oh, I haven't seen this episode. It's not over yet, is it? Well, There's one no, episode left. Our next oh. pod. So I'm saying the so future. You might, be, you might be even more surprised. Yeah, I'm surprised at how much I hated it. Oh, <laughs> oh no. As <laughs> always, you can find our full episodes on YouTube.com slash Was It Good. Follow us on Twitter at Was It Good. And on Instagram and TikTok at Was It Good Pod. Goodbye. Goodbye.